Once again, you're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Carolyn's on vacation. Pooh was going to be here, but she fell asleep. So, folks, you got me. Tonight, we're going to talk about a few things that uh, are very important and a few things that may be or may not be. I don't know. I know some of you out there have heard me make reference to the Galileo space probe and the fact that Jupiter is nothing less than a star that has never been ignited. The Galileo space probe is carrying two separate banks of plutonium. 49.7 pounds of plutonium to be exact. NASA says the plutonium provides the power for the spacecraft. Plutonium, ladies and gentlemen, is the most poisonous substance known to man. Just a small amount of plutonium in the atmosphere could kill every man, woman, and child on this earth. Why in the world would we send the most poisonous substance known to mankind to another planet, which we know very little about. Could it be that these two opposing banks of plutonium inside the spacecraft sealed when it plunges into the planet sometime around December 1999 will be crushed by the atmospheric pressure that it encounters tremendous pressures way beyond anything ever experienced or even that we are able to create here on Earth will cause an implosion, will cause the spacecraft to collapse in upon itself from an equal pressure that will be applied all around the spacecraft in the exact same method that atomic bombs are detonated, these two banks of plutonium will be impelled into each other and, and if the same thing happens that has happened every other time that this has occurred, there will be an atomic explosion. Would it be enough to ignite the planet Jupiter and make this a binary star system? I don't know. I have talked to some scientists who say that it would. I have talked to others who say that it is absolutely impossible. So I don't know. But I believe that there is an attempt to do exactly that. And I believe that that is the real purpose for the Galileo space probe. For it should reach, according to NASA's predictions, should reach Jupiter sometime in 1995. It will send a small probe down into the atmosphere of the planet to measure the atmosphere. And I believe its purpose is also to measure the pressure as it plunges deeper down toward the core of Jupiter. The Galileo space probe itself will go from moon to moon, photographing all of the moons of Jupiter, ending with the moon closest to the planet's surface, Io, and sometime around December 1999, according to NASA's own 
figures, calculations, its orbit should degenerate to the point where it plunges in to the planet. Now, <clears throat> when I first ventured this to the American people, a lot of people started laughing. And once again, my name was Mud. <laughs> but I'm used to that, folks. I'm used to being an original thinker. I'm used to throwing out new ideas. I'm used to putting the truth out to be examined. I'm used to being called names and being ridiculed. It's nothing new to me, and it doesn't hurt me a bit. Now, several things recently have occurred that tend to confirm my hypothesis. Number one, after the movie 2001, there was a movie called 2010, which played out this exact scenario. Only it was blamed upon some extraterrestrial force represented by a monolith. A monolith, a stone monolith, a black stone monolith. Those of you who have listened to our series on Mystery Babylon should know exactly what that means. And then, later, there was a movie that Hollywood made called The Children of the One Son Meet the Children of the Two Sons. About a time in the future when one of the planets in our solar system ignites and all of a sudden we have two suns instead of one. As in the past, Hollywood is giving us a preface of the future. Malachi Martin, a Jesuit priest, wrote a book called The Keys to This Blood. He wrote the book with the full knowledge and permission of Pope John Paul II, which means that he is speaking for the Pope. If you understand how the Catholic Church operates, he would not have had the Pope's blessing if he was not writing what the Pope wished him to write. In this book, he outlines a sign that will appear in the heavens at some future date which will cause mankind to rush back into the arms of the Church. He says that Pope John Paul II can only wait until this sign, this signal in the heavens, occurs. And then he will become the ruler of the world. And the Catholic Church will once again be the most powerful religion and government, ladies and gentlemen, because it is upon the face of this earth. In this book, he says that this sign, this the signal that will appear in the heavens will be a light that will be seen by all nations on this earth and that it will be a fission event. A fission event. And that's exactly what an atomic bomb is, ladies and gentlemen. A fission event. I have in my hand a compilation of Mary's messages to the world as given around the world at the various locations where the Marian visions are taking place. Mary's message to the world, I'm talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. I'll just read you one. They all say the same thing, but I'll just read you one. If I can find the... Here it is. Nine predictions were given to a woman named Kirkwood. Annie Kirkwood. Where, as she claims, Mary appears to her regularly. In Magigori, there's another location. 
these Marian visions around the world, this is what Mary is telling the world. After the turning of the earth, there will be two suns. This will become a binary solar system. For those of you who have been laughing at me, if you wish to continue to laugh, that's okay with me. But if you have any brains at all, you'd better understand that this all means something. You see, because I have no connection with Mary, I have no connection with Annie Kirkwood, I have no connection with Magigori, I have no connection with Malachi Martin or the Pope. I have no connection to Arthur C. Clarke, who wrote 2001 and 2010. None whatsoever. I don't know what it means that NASA is telling us that a comet is going to plunge into Jupiter sometime this summer. Maybe that's just a way to nullify or make people believe that whatever is going to happen there happens because of this comet. I don't know. Maybe nothing will happen. Maybe these people are full of beans. Maybe the scientists that say it's impossible are right. I don't know. But I will tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. When I come out and make a statement like that based upon my research and documents that I saw when I was with the Office of Naval Intelligence, which stated that a proposed project called Galileo could deliver five pounds of plutonium to Jupiter and ignite Jupiter to create another sun in the solar system to do away with the cycle of ice ages forever. Something else that tends to validate this is the proliferation of these maps showing the melting of the polar caps and the raising of the water in the oceans around the world and the new geography of the continents and the disappearance of many low-lying islands because of this, attempting to warn people to move to these spots where the land will remain high and dry. Predictions of earth changes. If you read the book of Daniel, you will find in there a prophecy that the moon will disappear from the sky and there will be no more night forever. That's exactly what would happen if we had 24 hours of daylight every day. You would not be able to see the moon. The stars would disappear, and there would be no more night. Forever. Now, I'm not sure what all of this means. I'm not sure that anything is even going to happen. But I do know this. Some men in this world believe that they are God. And they may be playing God right this moment. Don't go away. I'll be right back.
Friday, October the 22nd, 1993, the Arizona Republic Business Section. Editor Don Nicholson. Orbital's messaging system gets federal okay. Republic staff and wire services. Dulles, Virginia. Orbital Sciences Corporation, a space age company with a major manufacturing facility in the Phoenix area, said Thursday that it has received federal approval for its satellite based messaging system. The go-ahead from the Federal Communications Commission paves the way for final licensing of the Orbcom system within the next few months and the start of commercial services in 1994, said Alan Parker, president of Orbital Sciences Orbcom unit. Orbital's Space Data Division in Chandler, with about 870 employees, is developing the ground stations through which electronic signals will be transmitted to and from a planned array of 26 Orbcom satellites circling the Earth. Orbital Sciences predicts that Orbcom systems will be able to send or receive short messages worldwide for only a few cents apiece on pocket-sized communicators priced from about $50 to $400 depending upon their features. Potential uses include mobile communications in emergencies two-way electronic mail for palm-top computers and remote monitoring of such industrial complexes as offshore oil platforms. Those of you who have brains should be making connections by now. The 1994 target date for starting the messaging service is up to five years ahead of multi-billion dollar voice systems proposed by Motorola Incorporated, Loral Corp, and TRW Corporation, Parker said. Unlike Motorola's project called Iridium and those of other potential competitors, Orbcom would not handle voice communications. Instead, it would use pager-like devices and pocket computers to send and receive messages that would appear on a screen. Now you should be making even better connections here. In February, Orbital Sciences launched the first experimental Orbcom satellite aboard its Pegasus winged rocket. The satellite network is planned for low Earth orbit about 400 miles into space to provide global coverage. Global coverage. The big advantage for Orbcom is cost, while the Iridium system of 66 satellites is expected to cost about $3.4 billion, and TRW's 12-satellite Odyssey system would cost $1.3 billion. Orbital Sciences expects Orbcom's constellation of small satellites to cost $100 million to $125 million. Also on Thursday, Orbital Sciences announced third quarter net income of $1.16 million on revenues of $48.74 million, up from a net of $1.12 million on revenues of $47.04 million in last year's third quarter. Compiled from reports by Bloomberg Business News and Guy Webster of the Arizona Republic. Now, folks, let me get into the meat of the matter here, because there's a lot of meat and it really matters, believe me. Orbcom's Global Two-Way Wireless Communications Service Facts. The Global Wireless Communications System is the world's first wireless two-way data and message communications system providing coverage everywhere on Earth. The global system includes 26 microstar satellites circling the Earth in low orbits, one or more gateway Earth stations in each country where services are offered, four in the continental United States, and one intelligent network control center in each country. 
Old Tom uses narrow band, very high frequency or VHF frequencies between 137 and 150 megahertz. And so that you can gauge this, those of you listening on shortwave are listening on 5.810 megahertz. Commercial service scheduled to begin mid-1994 in the United States. I told you folks this would be a pivotal year. Orbcom communicators are priced from $100 to $400. They're easy to use, small in size, lightweight, and have a very long battery life. Subscribers transmit at 2,400 baud per second and receive at 4,800 baud per second, which according to the latest technology is slow. Standalone pocket-sized two-way Orbcom communicators with alphanumeric keypad and viewing screen for messaging. One of the reasons, folks, that it's slow is that that's a way to sell it, but that's not its true purpose. At the simple pager size, Orbcom communicators for integration with data collection and monitoring devices on industrial equipment, pipelines, and ocean buoys, and for standalone use as emergencies transmitters. Laptop and palm top computers and personal digital assistants or PDAs equipped with Orbcom. PCM CIA Type 2 cards to provide convenient two-way wireless email capability. Ready communications access everywhere on Earth, on a boat, in a truck or car, hiking or working at a remote job site. Are you beginning to get the picture? Simply send a message from any telephone, fax machine, email, terminal, or another wireless mobile service, or in the opposite direction to another Orbcom subscriber. Easy retrieval of messages from Orbcom's central electronic post box or from a remote database. Confirmation of message receipt. Built-in low-cost position location. Built-in low-cost position location capability. Vital to emergency. And tracking applications. Tracking applications. Tracking applications. And the ability to report GPS and Loran C determined positions. Automatic roaming capability anywhere in the United States or the world. Communications in buildings through interconnections with paging and other mobile data systems. The applications meet the needs of millions of customers around the world who have no access to simple, reliable, and low-cost communications and those who need true seamless communications capability in business or personal activities. Orbcom Data Communication Services, one-way receive only, and two-way communications between a subscriber's office and remotely located, unmanned monitoring equipment, sensors and activators. Typical applications include cargo tracking, environmental monitoring, animal tracking, animal tracking, animal tracking. Remote monitoring and controlling of pipeline, industrial and agricultural equipment, law enforcement, law enforcement, law, law enforcement. Orbcom message communication services, two way communications between standalone Orbcom communicators or other mobile messaging or computing devices equipped with Orbcom capability. Typical applications include personal and business messages. Search and Rescue Services. Search and Rescue Services. Fleet Management Communication Services. Automotive Towing Services. Orbital Sciences Corporation and its wholly owned subsidiary, Orbital Communications Corporation, or Orbcom, formed a joint venture with Teleglobe Incorporated to develop, operate, and market the Orbcom system and services worldwide. Orbital, located in Dulles, Virginia, very close to the Central Intelligence Agency headquarters, is a space technology company that designs, manufactures, operates, and markets a broad range of space products and services. Orbital's 1992 revenues were approximately $175 million. Teleglobe, headquartered in Montreal, Canada, is the world's fifth largest international communications service provider. It provides all international communications services for Canada, except for that with the United States. In 1992, Teleglobe's consolidated revenues were approximately $1,045 million.
Outcom service capabilities meet the needs of diverse commercial and civil government markets. One of the major, major capabilities outlined here in the charts are military, vehicle location, intrusion detection, customs and law enforcement, stolen property recovery, boxcars and containers, animal tracking, remote access monitoring, environmental monitoring, search and rescue, which means, folks, they're going to know exactly where you're at. Logistics control of trucks and their cargoes. Are they putting monitoring devices in new vehicles rolling off the assembly lines of major automobile and truck manufacturing plants in this country? That's what it looks like on here, folks. How are they going to use this for search and rescue unless you have something on you that shows them where you are at? Animal tracking. Most people don't understand it. Most people didn't make the connection in biology class in high school when if they had a good teacher they were told that human beings are animals. We are part of the animal family. We are mammals. How about that? Make you make you think a little bit, folks. I hope so. One of the gateways, there are four in the United States, is in Washington State. One is in Arizona, and this information came to me from militia intelligence. One is in New York State, and one is in Georgia. And that pretty much says it, folks. That pretty much does it. I have all kinds of charts in this information, all kinds of company information, some confidential stuff. Sometime soon I expect to visit the Arizona facility. Unless, unless somebody connected with it is listening to this broadcast. <laughs> in which case, maybe I won't. Right after the break, we're going to open the phones and uh, talk about what you've been hearing, talk about what you've been doing, talk about what's going on. Maybe we'll talk about what's happening in Montana. I tried to make sense of it, but Tom Valentine on Radio Freemasonry would not shut his mouth for two seconds long enough for any of those people to be able to make any sense out of what they were trying to communicate to the world. And maybe that's Tom Valentine's job. I don't know. Don't forget, the garden seeds are still open. $48 for listeners, $40 for CAGI members. Um, we are also doing, I believe, it's the pantry. Six months for one person. $730 for listeners, $700 for CAGI members. That's 197 pounds shipping weight. Seven cases of dried food in number 10 cans and number 2.5 cans. Remember, your order must be postmarked by on or before this Friday, this coming Friday. On or before this coming Friday. Don't go away. I'll be right back, folks, after this short pause. of a 
country roads on the wind it comes to call. And it sings in the farms and the factory towns and where you think there be no song at all. And the words are the words that our fathers said as they whistle down the years. And the name of the song is the name of the dream and it's music to our ears. America, America, and the dream goes on. America, America, and the dream goes on. Words that we read on the courthouse walls are the words that make us free. Well, folks, if we don't all wake up and do something soon, it will all just be a dream. And before long, after they continue tinkering with history and removing the real history from the history books and replacing it with the politically correct history or the history that they want the world to remember, after a while, the dream will disappear. And maybe no one will even remember the Constitution of the Bill of Rights. Or our forefathers, or the Revolution of 1776, or any of the greatness of this nation, the greatest nation that has ever existed upon the face of this earth in the entire history of the world. We face some very serious, very bad times in the near future. I try to urge you to prepare. You need at least two years supply of food and water. I don't care where you get it. I really don't. We provide it here simply because of the demand. We tried it once and nobody took advantage of it. And then all of a sudden everybody wanted it, so we tried it again, and this time people are, are doing it. So that's good. But if you want to get it somewhere else, that's okay with us. What counts is that you get it. You need to have something that you can use for money when everything breaks down, and it will, folks. It will. The only thing in the history of the world that has ever fulfilled that function for anyone has been precious metals in its various forms. The best form, always, is a form that everyone recognizes and accepts at a certain value, and that's coins. Gold and silver coins, by the way, are the only constitutional, legal and lawful money in this land. You see, because the law was never changed, stating what money is in the United States of America. They just went ahead and destroyed it, debased it, without paying any attention to the law, because the truth is, we've been under emergency rule since 1933. The Constitution has not been in effect for that time. And in 1945, when Harry Truman signed the United Nations Treaty, and it was ratified by the Senate, the United Nations Charter and the resolutions passed by the United Nations superseded the Constitution anyway by ruling of the Executive Department and the Justice Department of the United States government. That Article 6 of the Constitution has been interpreted to mean that treaties overrule the Constitution. 
Don't believe it? Well, we have 628 pages of official United States government documents, statutes at large, congressional record, United States Code, State Department documents, speeches, letters, newspaper articles to prove it beyond any shadow of any doubt whatsoever. Treason has been worked upon us. The government in Washington, D.C. is not our legally and lawfully constituted constitutional government. It is a counterfeit enemy of the Constitution and of the people of the United States of America. We are at war and have been at war for a long time. Most of us are just now discovering it. Some of us discovered it earlier than others and have been trying to wake the rest of you up so that we may have a chance at winning this war. I've done many hours of broadcasting telling you exactly who the enemy is, what their plans are, why they're doing this, what their religion is, what they believe, what they're trying to bring about, what the new world will be, who will be allowed in it, and who will not. But at this point in time, it no longer matters, folks, because the real enemy is us. Us. All of you out there who have been listening for months, some of you for almost two years now, and still haven't done anything to prepare yourselves, haven't taken any steps whatsoever to get ready for what's coming, you are the enemy of yourself and all the rest of us. Those of you who have not begun to seek out a militia unit to join or form a militia unit of your own, you are the enemy. You are the enemy. All of you who sit there and in light of all of the proof that we have given you, all of the documentation that we have made available, all of the books and references that we have cited for you to go and study and you have not done any of it and you still sit there and shake your head and call me a conspiracy nut, you are the enemy. All of you older folks who sit around and say, well, I don't want to risk my retirement check. I'm not going to be around when all of this happens anyway. You are the enemy. You may say you love your children and grandchildren, but you are liars. You are liars. For those of you who want to listen, who want to survive, who want to try to make this a better world, who believe that this, the greatest nation that's ever existed upon the face of this earth, that have given the only real freedom to humanity that humanity has ever possessed in the history of the world, those of you who believe that this is worth preserving and fighting for, Take the steps that we've outlined. Get ready. Don't be a victim in this. You must, you must choose one side or the other. People who try to sit on the fence in this one will be victims right off the bat. And if you want to find out how you can take steps to have some money, that's recognized by everyone in what's coming, during what's coming, and to be able to use it and protect your assets, call Swiss America Trading at 1-800-289-2646. That's 1-800-289-2646. If you don't want to call them, call somebody else. I don't care who it is, but call somebody and do something to protect yourself. And do it tonight. That's 1-800-289-2646. Take the weight off your shoulders. Do something.
Go to the phones now, and I think there's someone on there already. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello. Well, either couldn't find their tongue or couldn't hang on long enough. 602-333-2174 is the number. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello? Hello, turn off your radio. Okay, Bill? Yes? I'm trying to find out, um, uh, what do you think of um, that the nuclear physicist Stanton Friedman? He always seems to bring up your name on all his talk shows that you don't believe he's truthful. He works with the government. And I don't know if you heard ever hear Art Bell's show, but he had another guy on last night who brought you up. How come they are so concerned about you? They're scared to death of me because I know the truth and I tell the truth. And the truth is Stanton Friedman is not a nuclear physicist. If he ever did work as a nuclear physicist, it's been over 20 years ago. It's like uh, saying you're a golfer, but you haven't played a game in uh, 20, 25 years. You know what I mean? It seems strange to me he'd be so concerned with something as silly as this when he could be so into his nuclear physicist. Well, he's not into nuclear physics. I just told you, he's, he doesn't do any nuclear physics. He runs around the country telling people that we've all got to come together into one world government because aliens are here in flying saucers. And I don't know if you've noticed, it seems like Art Bell, who used to have a level head, seems to be like, ever since he became big and national, it seems like he has an agenda helping this new world order. Because when the Christians call up on the show and try to attack the new age implications of it, he starts getting vicious, making them look out to be fundamentalist crazies, even when they make some good points against Stanton and all those other guys that he has on his show. Well... I can't understand these people. But why not? They're easy to understand. They're socialists. They're Marxists. They want a one-world government. They are putting their money where their mouth is. Most conservatives, most constitutionalists, most patriots don't put their money where their mouth is, and so they lose the battle. Most of them don't even know what's going on half the time anyway. And also, I'd like to ask you, do you know anything about a group that's pushing this called, it's the Bigelow Foundation? Out of Las Vegas, I think the guy's name was Bob Bigler. He was sponsored from the program, and he's very into this whole thing for some reason. Don't know anything about it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. Yeah, yeah, I know those guys. <laughs> they hate my guts. Good evening. You're on the air. Oh, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was wondering. I just started reading your book, and I read the part on FEMA. And I was just curious because I was looking through a, um, I'm a recent college graduate, and I was looking through uh, a magazine about employment choices. And there are ads in the back with various descriptions. And some of the uh, organizations that are advertising for um, employment for students uh, include U.S. Air Force, uh, Lockheed Missiles, the National Security Agency, the Central Intelligence Agency, and an agency known as, uh, if I can find it here, it's, uh, it, Federal, well, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. <laughs> um, Forget it, it's bankrupt. <laughs> right. Uh, and an agency that's used in, uh, it's the, uh... I don't care if you look for what you're looking for. But it's Army Corps of Engineers. Okay. And it claims here in the organizational profile <laughs> that in the 20th century, the Army Corps has built Army and Air Force facilities that saw the nation through five wars, one long Cold War, constructed civil water resource projects, performed work for other range, others ranging from space shuttle launch sites to wastewater treatment plants. Yeah, they built a dam across a creek on my father's farm once. And uh, I was wondering what their role in FEMA, because it also mentions that they um, have also... 
They're, they're government agencies. They work. They're the big part released to victims of national national disasters, and I wonder what their role would be in a national disaster. And I'll just hang up and, and listen. Well, you call the wrong person. Oh, really? Yeah, you should call them and ask them. Really? Yeah, that's what I do. How do you think you do research? When I want to find out about an organization, the first thing I do is call that organization and ask them for every piece of public relations documentation and paperwork that they can send me. And then I ask to talk to someone who represents them, who can explain their mission, their role, their purpose, their organizational structure, who their uh, bosses and higher-ups and executives are. Yeah. And all the, you know, they have you know, contacts here, and I was definitely looking into uh, call them. Expecting all of these, the ones that I thought were, inter were um, significant. Call them. Read all the stuff they send you, listen to everything they say, and then go and investigate them to find out what the truth is. Okay, and one, one, one quick thing. Yeah. Um, I was also looking through, uh, they had international organizations for jobs as well, and uh, I remember, I know you mentioned before the Council on, on the World Council of Churches. Yeah. And the fact that they were founded, and I, I was kind of surprised, they were founded in 1948. Their, uh, their headquarters are in Geneva, Switzerland. Yeah, they were founded right after the United Nations Treaty was signed. All of these organizations came into being right when the United Nations was formed, the treaties were signed, and they began to bring about their one world government. And they have a monthly magazine publication called One World. Yeah, I get it, every month. And uh, that would be interesting. And does that give you a clue as to uh, what their uh, philosophies are as far as... Um... I already know what their philosophy is. Their philosophy is that all religions teach basically the same thing and they're trying to bring all religions together to create a one world religion one religion and no other religions will be allowed in the new world order hmm. and what about the world alliance of reformed churches which is wait, 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 wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute you're going about this the wrong way mm -hmm. and you're also doing it contrary to what i teach you're asking me to give you all the answers i'm trying to teach you to go look for them yourself you see, because I can sit here and answer all your questions. They won't mean much to you. When you go find the answers, it'll mean an awful lot to you. Well, right. I was just kind of wondering whether it was worth, you know, really uh, finding out or... or, or no, nope, not if you want to be a slave. If you want to be a free, well-informed person, you must find out all the time everything about every organization, every government, every person, every thing that you can learn. Well, I have to thank you, Mr. Cooper. You're definitely an inspiration, and uh, you've motivated me. Thank you. Very much. Good. I'm glad. I, I hope so. That's what I'm trying to do, and thank you for calling. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey. Hi, William. Hi. Um, I, you know, it's amazing. I just got done watching Lucifer, or uh, it's actually 2000 Lucifer. Lucifer 2000, Anthony J. Hilder. Right, right. And Jordan Maxwell. Yeah, I, I got done watching it yesterday, and I, I thought it was... I don't believe in the word coincidence, and here you are talking about the Galileo, Galileo and all that. I'm the only one that ever talks about it. They learned it from me. Okay. Most well, people don't. Check that. <laughs> um, I, I, I do believe in everything that you're saying, and, and I, I do believe that the reason why they did send that that off in, uh, is their intention is to create the second sun and, and create a panic that's going to make the people uh, surrender their souvenirity so that they'll be able to con control all the sheeple. Well, that's certainly going to be a byproduct of it, but I don't think that's their original intent. I think they really do want to end the cycle of ice ages so that there will be a, a fairer climate on the earth. Uh, do, do you realize what an ice age would do to civilization? Do you realize what it would do to our ability to raise crops and feed the right. populations? Uh, not everything that these men do is evil, and not everything that they do is done with evil intent. They believe in their hearts that they're doing the right thing. Right thing, yeah. Okay, I wanted to ask you one thing. Um, in watching that, they were, uh, Mr. Hilder, uh, he made a claim that the AIDS uh, epidemic was created at Fort Drager, I believe is what he said. No, nope. he learned that from me too. It's in my book. Okay. Um, I published it four years ago. Okay. Everybody laughed at that, too, called me an absolute kook. And now Dr. Lorraine Day, Dr. Strecker, everybody has confirmed everything that I've said. Is that, is that, so then they did indeed, uh, is it true that they had administered shots and injections to, to the people in, uh, like, Africa and that, what, like, was supposedly supposed to be uh, vaccination shots and, in, in order to create that epidemic? According to what I learned in the Office of Naval Intelligence under Project MK Naomi, 
and the smallpox vaccinations in Africa, whatever causes AIDS, and I've never known what it was, and I've never stated what it is because I don't know. I just know from reading those documents that whatever causes AIDS was in that vaccine. It was also in the hepatitis B vaccine uh, administered to homosexuals in New York, San Francisco, Chicago, and uh, I think uh, three other cities in the United States, New Orleans. Wow. That's fascinating. Well, i, I got to tell you, I take my hat off to you. You're doing a great job. Keep up the, the good work. Keep reaching out to the uh, to the younger generation with your music like you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Yeah, folks, everything that's coming out now today was in my book four years ago, and I was shunned. People said I was crazy and saying I made it all up, that it was, it was absolute uh, uh, drivel. <laughs> Oh, my. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, Bill. Uh, I have three tidbits of information you might be interested in here. First of all, the uh, Gannett meeting, uh, you had mentioned on a couple of... It's May the 3rd. Uh, oh, so, yeah, they moved it to the 3rd. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I'm going to have to tell everybody tonight we're not going this year simply because we don't have enough proxies. If we go and try to use the proxies that we have this year, we'll, we will be in laughing stock. All of you people out there have got to get busy. It's not enough just for you to buy shares. You have to continue to buy shares. You have to sell it to your church. You have to go to organizations in your town. You have to explain to them what we're doing. You have to get a ground swell of grassroots gannet buying throughout this country. That's the only way it's going to work, folks, and we can do it. People are fed up. People want to see the proof, truth printed. They want to hear the truth on radio and television. So you've got to go out and start selling this. You know, I sell it over the air. You've got to go out and sell it in your communities. Because remember, not everybody has a shortwave radio. and Not everybody has a satellite dish. And a lot of people who do don't listen to me. So, so we need your help. And we will not be going to the stockholders meeting this year. We will go next year, no matter how many uh, proxies we have. And since we have a whole year and a couple of months uh, to do it in, next year we should be able to uh, roll Gannett Company Incorporated over and make it work for the people. Yeah, if we have any time left by next year. Well, we can't go like that. We have to do what we can do, and we have to continue to fight and continue to do what we can do uh, until uh, we either win or we can't do it anymore. Uh, I have another thing here from the Orlando Sentinel on March 25th of this month, you know, uh, 1994. Uh, they have uh, an article in here that says, U.S. Customs Service plans to turn a Navy mess hall into the one of the nation's most important radio communication centers. Further down, they say it's going to be a government radio network, a government-wide radio network from Orlando. And they then make a statement that the Navy has already agreed to give the land to the U.S. Treasury Department. And uh, that, you know, here they're saying the Customs Service, now they're saying the Treasury Department. Uh, that whole well, what they're really saying is the United Nations. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you understand where all that leads, the Treasury Department is not the United States Treasury. It is a branch of the International Monetary Fund, which comes under the United Nations. Lloyd Benson gets his salary from the International Monetary Fund, not from the United States government. The ATF, the IRS, the Treasury Department all work for the United Nations. And uh, one last item. Uh, and, and I might add, the president is a prisoner of the Secret Service, no matter who the president is and no matter whose side he is on. The Secret Service is also a branch of the Treasury Department, which is an arm of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So understand that even if the president wanted to do good for this country, he would get what Kennedy got. Lockheed Corporation's annual report that just came out. Uh -huh. On page uh, six, there's a picture of an F-22 advanced tactical fighter. And in the caption underneath, the last part of the caption reads, In 1993, Congress supported the F-22 program, appropriating nearly $2.1 billion in funding in the 1994 budget to make sure the new world order has but one world power. Now, that's a, kind of a curious statement to find in a Lockheed. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. You see, the American people, or the sheeple, as I like to call them, are the last to know. Mm -hmm. But it's all around us. 
That's right. Everything nothing, you pick up, everything you look at. Nothing is hidden because generally when they say that people do not use their intelligence and so are no better than animals who do not have intelligence and so that makes them beats of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent, they're right. Well, thanks very much, Bill. And if you want a copy of this Orlando Sentinel about the radio center in Orlando, I'll forward it out to you. Great. Yeah, we'd love it. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, we got about time for one more quick call. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes. Good morning. Um, talking about Arthur Z. Clarke, he had another book that I glanced through one time. I could tell you the name and the year it came out. It was uh, 2061. Uh, Odyssey 3, uh -huh. written in 1989. And in the back of the book, it mentions, I can't quote it, a correlation between the shape of the UN building and the monolith. Yes, absolutely. It is the stone in 2001. It's the stone that is, it's the black stone that's inside the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, which you'll all see on the Luxor tape, which, by the way, is in the final stages of editing, should be shipping in a, within two weeks. Okay. Uh, in uh, 1990, there was a uh, meeting of uh, a summit, Catholic University of America. One person named uh, Luciano Guerra gave a speech, and the title of it was The Masonic Movement and the Fatima Message. Yeah. I wish I knew what that was. The Fatima Message? Sorry? The Fatima Message was, pray for peace, say your rosary daily. Russia must be consecrated yes. to the Sacred Heart. If Russia is not consecrated to the Sacred Heart, God will punish, punish mankind. It's a sign that will appear in the heavens that will signal God's imminent punishment will be a great light in the sky that will be seen by all nations. Good night, folks, and God bless you all.